Welcome back once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today we're going to check out a vehicle that most likely ranks very low on the popularity scale. This truck is a huge challenge, yet similar to the Ford CLT 9000, it is satisfying to make it work in everyday operations. So before we start, I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into it and check it out. Produced in the 1960s, the International Transtar series were highway semi-tractors with day cab and sleeper compartment configurations. In the 1970s, the 4070 Alpha was then upgraded to the Bravo series, which consisted of larger engines and improved raised cabs. These changes caused the low cab version to be discontinued. Due to technological advancements, this truck would be replaced by newer model vehicles, but overall the cab over design never truly went away. In SnowRunner, the Transtar is one of three courageous highway trucks in this off-roading adventure. If you've watched my Ford CLT 9000 review, again, I hope you don't click away and I challenge you to have an open mind on this. In this review, you'll see a lot of similarities between both of these cab over highway trucks. You might notice there are a ton of downsides to manage, but I think this truck might surprise you as well. So before we get into those pros and cons, let's take a look at the base stats. The International Transtar 4070 Alpha is classified as a highway truck. It weighs 6.06 .06 tons. In its stock configuration, it boasts a power to weight of A+, a durability of B+, fuel consumption B+, Fuel capacity is 265 liters or 71 gallons. It comes with the stock suspension. Its tires also come stock with a 39 inch highway tire. It does not have all wheel drive and it does not have differential locking either. All right, let's dive into the pros and cons of the International Transtar 4070 Alpha. And you guys know how this goes. Bad news first. So opening up our downsides list at the number one spot, no all-wheel drive or differential locking. One of the most powerful features in this game is all-wheel drive and differential locking. Only a few trucks lack these options and I can say with confidence that this downside is most of the reason this truck's popularity has been low since launch date. As we move through this list, the cringe factor indeed seems to worsen with every downside, yet we have to continue this onslaught with downside number two, ground clearance. Throughout my whole truck review series, we've come to understand the importance of ground clearance. Being that this is indeed a highway truck, drivers can clearly see that it was meant for the road, not off-road. However, a little later, we'll talk about an upgrade that was recently added to the game to help the Transtar in this area. Without going too much into it, Dragging your frame through the elements will add resistance against vehicle movement. Downside number three, small tires and weight. To be brief, the Transtar is one of the lighter hauling class vehicles in this game, and it doesn't help that its tire height is really small as well. Fully upgraded, its tires max out at 42 inches, which is the same as the Ford CLT 9000. No all wheel drive, no differential locking, lack of ground clearance, lightweight and small tires attributes to our downside number four coming up, which is terrain navigation. The combination of those previous downsides equates to this downside right here, which is a huge driver deterrent. Let's be real, missions in SnowRunner last more than a few minutes and traveling is usually pretty difficult. The Transtar, in my opinion, is just not going to navigate well in those harsh conditions. If you're playing the game chronologically, the Transtar is unlocked rather early. Yet, with most of its upgrades attached, it's not going to traverse those deeper mud and snow areas. The only highway truck that can be trusted in heavy off-road conditions would be the GMC MH9500 with all of its upgrades and good driver skill. Downside number five, it upgrades way too late. Even though the Transtar does get an exclusive engine upgrade very early in the game, recently a raised suspension option was added much later on in season six. This upgrade is found in main. 
It allows for increased clearances and larger tires, which indeed does help its off-roading somewhat. But overall, this upgrade just came way too late in the game. Downside number six, steering. The 4070 Alpha's steering is fast enough, but without all-wheel drive, there is no driving force pulling the vehicle through the turn. This will sometimes cause you to feel like your turns just don't bite into the surface when you initiate a turn command. However, as we've learned, this is not a big deal compared to our previous downsides. Downside number seven, durability. A statistic not many people care about is durability, but this is something I actually look into, especially on hard mode. Highway trucks are the least durable because, well, they're meant for highways. I felt this was a downside because unfortunately, in SnowRunner, trucks are taking a beating even if you're moving on roads at moderate speeds. And finally, coming in at downside number eight, it's missing add-ons. Realistically, the Transtar is not going to be able to handle most jobs that require those add-ons, and in truth, there are definitely better options. Yet due to its shorter frame, the 4070 is missing a few add-ons that I wish I could have used for testing purposes for this video. You might think this is nitpicking, and I guess it kind of is, yet I did want to cover all bases. Well folks, that was pretty brutal, and I'm ready to hear some good news, so let's get started. Here are the pros for the International Transtar 4070 Alpha. Breaking into the upsides list at the number one spot, surprising engine power. While the Transtar isn't going to break into the top 10 when it comes to power, it might surprise you. If you compare engines of fellow highway trucks, heavy duty, and one off-road class truck, you'll see that the Transtar's engine actually has better torque ratings. The vehicle is actually lighter in weight, and wheel spin is an issue. However, the good thing is, Weight from hauling will help this. Another pleasing detail, along with having comparable power to some workhorse trucks, is next on our upsides list. Upside number two, fuel economy. I'm not going to break into a whole lecture on this one, but in short, the Transtar has great fuel economy because, well, it should because it's a highway truck. It doesn't have the largest fuel tank in the game, which could have been on the downsides list. But due to this good economy, I didn't feel it was worth mentioning. In heavy situations or when you're stuck, you burn more fuel. So having a fuel efficient engine is without a doubt an upside. Upside number three, balance and weight distribution. Similar to the CLT 9000, but a tad bit lighter in weight, the Transtar feels like more of its mass is in the rear end of the vehicle's frame. For a vehicle without all-wheel drive, this can be favorable for gripping purposes. Also, the Transtar feels equally and sometimes more stable than the CLT. Upside number four, hauling trailers. As you probably can guess, the Transtar, just like the CLT, both are well suited for hauling trailers via low saddle. You've seen me mention other trucks that have issues with frame to trailer contact, but the 4070 doesn't seem to have this issue like the Fleet Star, the GMC, and the Kodiak, and a few others. I found that the Transtar feels comfortable with the low saddle configuration. This setup will add cargo load directly over the only powered axles. And finally, coming in at upside number five, it's challenging yet satisfying and it's free. I used this same upside on my CLT 9000 review with the addition of the upside of getting the Transtar for free, just from rolling up to its drowned location. I completely understand that these two trucks are very difficult to use, but they are useful in some areas. This is why scouting areas is crucial for information on where you can and cannot deploy these trucks to. It's a great feeling to have all those low expectations and be blown away from seeing more performance than you predicted. Alright, so moving on to my personal ratings for this truck. For power, due to being stronger than a few trucks outside of its class, I felt a 4 was fair. 
for terrain navigation, a rating of 1. In truth, it's simply not made for heavy off-road scenarios. Without all-wheel drive and differential locking, this truck is one of the harder vehicles to drive, especially for newer players. For aesthetics, I'm a fan of the cab overs recently, so I think a 4 is good here. Stability is average to above average, yet I couldn't find a reason to bump it up another rating. While its fuel capacity isn't where I would like it to be, its consumption is the reason this highway truck is getting the 5. It really can use most add-ons that fall within its frame size, so I felt this rating was fine. Very lightweight, no all-wheel drive or differential locking, small tires, and a subpar ground clearance is a clear indicator that the Transtar just suffers in deep spots. So in conclusion, the International Transtar 4070 Alpha, for what it is, actually does a pretty good job. It's severely hamstrung from lacking all those features we covered throughout the video, yet it can surprise you at times. With some good scouting of areas, players can deploy and use this truck to their benefit. I've personally used this vehicle on Michigan, Alaska, and some later parts of the game, and it felt great to actually make it work. It's a huge challenge, and honestly, I can't fault anyone for not using this truck or the CLT 9000. However, I do feel these vehicles have a place in the game. So in closing, the Transtar has been on the developers' minds with that raised suspension upgrade, yet I'm not sure if they have any other plans for it. For now, I guess I'll take that upgrade and put it to use. So if you're up for the challenge, try it out and let me know what you think. I hope this review gave you a fresh, new perspective of the International Transtar 4070 Alpha. Please smash that like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope y'all have a wonderful day, God bless, and stay upright.